Hey, check out my new album coming out here for the band Sparkling Slugs. I'm going to show you how I created this really quickly using some tools that are going to be very familiar if you have ever used um, Google Slides or Google Docs. So this was created in Google Drawings. Oh, I don't know about you, but I didn't discover Google Drawings until last semester. And as you can see, it's comprised of a background image, text. I've got a golden slug that I cut out and put on there. And then this little um, touch here that makes it kind of look like an album cover. So I'm going to move pretty quickly, but you can uh, pause and rewind if you want to see how I did something. So uh, for starters, how do we get to Google Drawings? It's part of... Google Drive. So create a new tab or a new window. Go to your waffle, this little checkerboard thing here by your Google login. Click on Drive. And along the left hand side under New, heading down here under More, you can find Google Drawings. Aha! And the default puts up this rectangle for you. Now, album covers or CDs are usually um, a square. So the first thing we want to do is change the setup. So under File, Page Setup, I'm going to, um, instead of these preset options, click Custom. And you can see that the width is set to 10 by 7.5. I'm going to go ahead and make these two numbers the same. So I'm going to type in 7.5 and hit Apply. So now I have a square. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and give my um, file a name. So I will call it Sparkling Slugs LP. That's, you know, long play. That means it's a record. Um, and you can pay attention there to where it's going if you want to organize it further. You can check there. Okay. So um, the first thing that you might be instinctually inclined to do is to add the text. But if we look back to this one, notice how the text is sitting over top of a background image. So I would advise you to start with a background image first. Let's use the website unsplash.com if that works for you. It's filled with really great high res, freely usable images. So folks have uploaded their pictures here saying, yeah, do something creative with it. So I'm going to search for sparkle. And as you can see, there are lots of really beautiful images that we can use without worry. I like this one. It caught my eye. So click on the little arrow to download it. You can give a shout out if you want, or you can just X out of that. So then when I come back here to my uh, blank document, I can go to insert image upload it from my computer and on your device find your downloads folder as one of the options here and you'll notice these are named the um, photographer's name in a file so i'll click it in here okay now with this image it's a long skinny rectangle i've got a square shape here for um, my background or my template now with this one, I'm going to go ahead and just stretch it. Now you want to be careful of that though, because if you had a picture, say, of like someone's face or lettering, if you stretch it, it's going to get distorted. So I'll show you in a minute how to crop something, and that might be a good option for you if your image isn't square. So I stretched it to make it fit the size of my uh, template. Next thing I'll do then is add the text. So just like um, in slides, you can add a text box and I'll just kind of draw in a rectangle there where I want it to go. Type in sparkling slugs. And of course that's terrible. We need to jazz up our font a little bit. Remember you do have the more fonts option. Um, this was used recently when I made my demo one, so I'm going to stick with this uh, Pacifico. It's way too small, so let's 
kick it up here in size. I'm even going to go ahead and highlight just the word slugs to make it even larger. And I don't quite like how those two are touching, so I'm going to play around here with the size of those to see if I can get it to look right. I don't remember what I did here. Ooh, those are definitely a little, both a little bigger. So let me take that all the way to 96. Now you can type in your own numbers here. Did you know that? That if you wanted it to be 38, or you can dink it up one by one, but it's much faster to um, send it through this way. You can also play around with the justification, whether it's off to the side um, or whatnot. You can, of course, bold it, italicize, whatever you think um, looks good here for you. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm maybe going off brand here, and I'm going to do sparkling in italics. I'm going to change the font color. By selecting both of those, I'll make these white and put it there. Now you can rotate it um, so it's not just sitting in a straight line. This little circle right up above your text box lets you drag that and give it a little rotation. And you can click on the edges of that box and move it around if you want to. Okay. Um, now you might remember that mine had a little drop shadow on it there. It looks like I also did a little um, centering to get rid of that little spot there where those two are kissing each other. So let me try centering that. I can also try just centering this one. You could also... Um, make two separate text boxes if you wanted both of your words to be um, totally movable on their own. Okay, so fun features. You can add a drop shadow like I had in that one by clicking on your format option. So when the text is selected, it might show format options over here depending on how much space you have visible. You might have to click on the dots to reveal more options. And so there I can see that format is available for me there. So right away, I see the drop shadow thing. I can just give it a little check and it put that little kind of grayish outline around the outside. Now it has a drop down menu, so that tells me there are more options. I can decrease the transparency, make that a little more defined. I can play with the angle at which the shadow is cast. I can change the distance, make it look like it's further away or closer. You can even um, decide how blurry it gets on you there. So when you get a high like, you don't have to do a drop shadow, but it's a great way to help your text kind of pop, right? Okay, you even have options for like creating a reflection. See how it makes it look like it's reflected down there. That's actually not terrible. Maybe I'll come back to that, but I don't think I'll mess with it right now. Okay, so sparkling slugs. We've got text on a background. It's looking good, but you know, it needs a little bit more. The obvious choice, of course, is a slug. So I'm going to come back to unsplash and oops type in slug lots of options all of them seem to be photos none have a transparent background i could also do a google image search but i'm really smitten with the uh, ones here from unsplash so i'm going to let's take a closer look that guy looks pretty good so i'll click on download for free and then I can remember, bring him over to remove background. If I upload that image again from my downloads folder, it's going to take the background right out of there. Good job. And again, I'll download this one. So I'll have two copies of that in my downloads folder. 
one that's the first picture and then one with the background removed. It'll be a PNG file. So I'll come over here, find my slug that's a PNG file. Notice that I can scale it, stretch it to make it bigger. Remember, stretching with the corners will cause it to not distort if you stretch inwards on these other points it'll squish so depending on what you want now here's where i'm going to show you how to crop because look at how much extra space i have around here it makes it a little tricky so i'm going to double click and you'll notice that it changes once i do to have these black outlines around the bounding area this is a little tricky to do with a trackpad if you have a mouse now would be a good time to plug it in but you can grab those little black bars and pull them in. You can drag from, a, whoops, see that's why it gets a little tricky. I'm going to try to drag here from a corner. I want to make sure the single arrow and not the move arrow is selected. So now I've got a box that's a little closer in around there. And I hit enter or return on my keyboard. And now my uh, picture has been... Uh, cropped into a smaller size and you can do that with a transparent background or um, a filled background just as we had options with the text we also have image options so i can uh, flip it here under size and rotation that'll make my slug go the opposite way if i know what angle i want it to be at i can kind of play around with that here or I can again free rotate it by um, grabbing onto that circle there now there are certainly more options and the way that I got um, my slug here to be a golden color was with this uh, recolor feature so right now my um, slug is selected but it's saying no recolor here it gives me a little preview of what would it look like if it were blue or pink. I'm going to pick this golden color. And notice that um, there are even some more options here that you can kind of play around with. Under adjustments, you can also change the transparency of that. You can make it brighter or less bright. So know that you've got some good options available to you. I'm going to go ahead and make this guy a little bit bigger. And that's uh, looking pretty good. Um, you can also use the arrows on your keyboard to move it in small little increments as well. That's a tool that I use often. So it's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to show you two more quick things before we call it a day. One of the things I did was um, give this a black border. I thought that kind of helped to set it out. So I'm going to click on the background and pick a fatty border here. Let's try a 16 point border. Um, that might be a little too fatty. 12 point border. Better. Now it is um, technically outside of the bounding box so if I want to be careful about that I can make it fit within the um, square that I created for my template and I also added in um, this little strip that was the stereo wonderland of sound I googled record cover label thinking about some of those vintagey things don't you think sparkly slugs are kind of like a you know, a jazzy group, maybe playing at a cocktail party. So I um, liked this image quite a lot, but I only want this little section. So that's where cropping will come in. So I'm going to right click on my thing on your Chromebook. That's going to be control click. And I can say copy image this time. You could also download it, but I'm just going to bring it right over here and paste it 
into my design. Now you can see that, of course, it brought the whole thing. So this is where we'll crop it. I'll double click and again, try to carefully pull down to get that right in where I want it. Oops, again, watch out for that move tool that wants to happen on you there. It gets a little tricky. Okay, so see how it kind of um, made the rest of that look faint. It's showing you here what's in there. And again, hit enter, return. And I can bring that down into place there. And that kind of makes it look like a legit album, doesn't it? We'll give this just a little tweak. And we can, of course, keep playing around with it. Uh, one thing I did want to show you here, I know I said two things, but I'm going to show you three things, um, is that order is important. So let's say I wanted the slug to be over top of this. Um, with your image selected up here under arrange, you can go to order. And if I say send it backwards, notice how it put that behind. So you can uh, select different things and um, put them in different like order in the stack. So that can be a handy tool too. Let me grab this guy here and get him back down towards center. And I think we'll call that good for now. Thanks for sticking around with me while we recreated that album cover.